Today I'm going to be going through the basic black and white printing process in the dark rooms here at Middlesex University. The negative to positive print process is one of the oldest and most enduring photographic processes and it's been used over the years by such luminaries as uh, Ansel Adams, uh, Irving Penn and uh, John Blakemore who we were lucky enough to have come into the dark rooms last year and do a demonstration for the students. Okay, <clears throat> so the enlarger is used to enlarge the image from the actual size negative to a print size. And uh, you need to set up this, uh, which is called a masking frame or masking easel, to hold the paper. Here I've got an old print and I've marked on the back of it the square corners that I want to use for this particular image. Then you can move these blades on the easel around to mask the edge of the image so that you get a nice clean edge to the print. So the first thing we need to do is put the negative into the negative holder. Uh, it's important that the emulsion side of the negative is facing down because if you get it the wrong way up and there are any words in the image, they will appear in mirror writing and that looks like you don't know what you're doing. So you place that into the enlarger and then you have to focus the image onto the baseboard. We've got the neg in there and the lights are out now. We'll switch the enlarger on and there is the image projected on to the baseboard. To make sure it's absolutely in focus we use this which is called a focus finder and it's like a little microscope which enables you to actually look at the film grain and the, the point of that is that when the grain itself is in focus the image can't get any sharper. The, the, the other thing that you can control at this printing stage is the contrast of the uh, print. And this is essentially the number of grey tones uh, in the final print. Once you've determined that exposure and you've set your uh, contrast, you then want to get out the photographic paper. Take away this one we were using to position it slide it into the masking easel here and that that holds it in exactly the place we require it. Once that is in place we then fire off the exposure. Voila. And then we take this and develop it. Okay then you take the print which has been exposed and you put it into the solution here. This is a, an alkaline developer solution and what it does is it will stain the areas that have been hit by the light. It then goes into this bath which is uh, called a stop bath and this is essentially it's vinegar, it's acetic acid but because it's an alkaline solution it neutralizes it and it stops the developing process from happening. It also stops the alkaline developer migrating into this, which is the fixer, and that's the thing which removes the light sensitivity from the paper. When it's completely fixed, you want to take it out of the fixer bath and put it into a water bath. We need to wash all the chemistry off the print because ultimately it will uh, reduce its life because it bleaches the image off. So we must wash all the chemicals out. After the print is fully washed, uh, you can take it out and have a look at it uh, in the daylight. It's very important to look at it in a decent light source because all the tonal values are very different in under the red lights. Um, once <coughs> this, uh, this looks like a good print, so we'll now run this through a dryer and then one can spot out any little bits of dust with a tiny little brush if you need to do that. But uh, there is the finished print.